Mr. Jabari Davis is here. <laughs> Why the Sanford and Son though? Why the <laughs> Why the Sanford and Son? Now, I'm a changed brother, you know what I'm saying? I came up here five years ago, I'm on some like tears for fears shit now. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> I, I changed my taste in music. I went to Simply Bluegrass and Golden Gate Park and I sat on a, a on a comforter and had red wine with a white girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, Get where I came from. But I did that. I did that for my people. <laughs> oh man, this show is hot, man. You guys look good, man. You guys look all fancy and shit. My, it's like laundry day for me. I'm just throwing on like all kind of shit right now. I got on just a thermo, some shirt. This show don't match, but it's like it's that time in San Francisco. You just start matching shit for warmth purposes. You know what I'm saying? Like, Fuck this, I'm gonna wear this hoodie and this cummerbund. Fuck it, I'm gonna just this shit. <laughs> this shit, it's warm right now. I just got back from LA, man. Actually, I gotta go back there a uh, week after the next, man. I'm from there, man. I grew up in Los Angeles. Uh, I grew up actually in a small town called Altadena, California. A uh, really small town. By round of applause, how many people know Altadena? By round of applause. Okay, okay, you know my town? Yeah. Was it the milk? We have like dairy products, like in some of the liquor stores across the country. We got Altadena milk, Altadena orange juice, right? You know what I'm saying? I'm here to let you know I grew up there my whole life. I've never seen a cow in my motherfucking life there. Really. <laughs> There's not a dairy at all. Just gangbangers out there hanging out, <laughs> fucking up nature. We live by mountains and shit, so it's a lot of like ranch culture. We have trails, we have ranched out properties. The only thing is we have gang culture too, so it's not uncommon to drive through Altadena and see a crib riding a horse. <laughs> I right? And I used to think that shit was cool coming up, but as I got older, I started thinking like, what the fuck did this horse do to get caught up with these motherfuckers? Like, <laughs> like this horse had a future, you know what I'm saying? Like, Santa Anita racetracks is five miles away, why is he gangbanging? I didn't understand. You know, it's funny, man, you grow up in Southern California, or just any particular neighborhood in general, there's a certain culture to your neighborhood. And in my neighborhood, gang culture was pretty much it. You understand know what I'm saying? Like, regardless of what you wanted to do, that was just what it was. It was just gangsters everywhere. You kind of had to choose or be a part of a gang to survive. You know, the problem was I grew up smart and black. Like, I love reading books as a kid. That shit just had my imagination going crazy. I love immersing myself in books. So I grew up smart and black. Problem was being smart, and my hood wasn't trendy, so I kind of had to be smart in the closet. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like I didn't really understand like how, how much I had to be smart in the closet until I moved up here and I started talking to my gay comedian homie. And he was like, listen, dude, my whole life, I had to suppress who I was, you know what I'm saying, out of fear of judgment from my friends and my family. And I thought about that shit for a minute. I was like, damn. That's kind of how I felt growing up smart and black in the hood. Like, you know how hard it was for me growing up and suppressing my synonyms? <laughs> you know, like having a gang of words you just couldn't use? You know, like, I'm gonna tell you, man, the shit came to a head. I remember I was 11 years old and I was doing an internship with the Crips at the time, right? <laughs> I know I wasn't like an official gang member yet. I was doing like riding along some drive-bys and shit. So like loading clips and shit, Googling escape routes. You know what I mean? Like that was like, I was like one of those 50 dudes, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I remember we, we ended up getting into a fight with the local rival gang. And as we was running away from these dudes because we was outnumbered, I sprained my ankle. And when we got back to the park, one of the homies was like, hey cuz, how your ankle? And I really wanted to use the word excruciating to describe my pain. But I knew these motherfuckers wouldn't get it. You understand what I'm saying? So I had to suppress that shit and just settle for, man, my shit hella hurting right now. 
damn, I want to use excruciating, man. It's my new fucking word of the week right now. <laughs> but I couldn't hide it for too long. You know, eventually these fools found out I was smart. You know, I was, uh, I was holding a pistol for one of the OGs. And we got back to the park and said, hey, little homie, give me my gun back. So I reached in my backpack and I went to give him his gun and my report card fell out. And these motherfuckers looked at my report card and found out I was in honors English. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I was like, damn, they're going to kick me out the class and shit. They're going to kick me out the gang. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm taking honors classes. You know, Crips don't take the SAT. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had a lot of fears. Then they had a meeting and they came back. And you know, these fools made me the official graffiti editor. <laughs> I spent my whole gangbanging career walking around my neighborhood putting commas and exclamation marks on death threats. <laughs> And walking these motherfuckers back through like, hey, homie, you don't want to have a death threat that's a fragmented sentence. Okay. So I went ahead and put a preposition and an adjective in there for you, homie. Complete thoughts, homie. Complete thoughts. I was never meant to be in a gang. I wanted to be in a book club. I was in the acronym. I was like, fuck, I'm going to turn the Crips into a book club. C-R-I-P, Consciously Reading in Public Spaces. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was gonna be the, an acronym. We was gonna switch it up, we was gonna change the hood. One book at a time. <laughs> I love reading though, man. I, I, got, I picked it up when I was young. When I was younger, my mom, my father was in and out of my life sometimes. So when I was younger and I'd get in trouble, like my mother would put me on a unique punishment. She would make me read books. So as long as like it took me to read the book, that's how long my punishment was. That's how long I was grounded. And I remember I got caught doing a petty theft when I was like 13 years old. And she came and picked me up from the sheriff's station and she had a big stack of books. And I was like, fuck, I'm on punishment for a long time. And I got to reading these books, getting to my punishment. And I remember at this particular time, you guys, you gotta understand my mentality. Like all I wanted to be was a gangster. Like, that's all I wanted to be. That's every image I ever saw of myself. Like, I wanted to be a thug. I wanted to be easy e for Halloween. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was like, you know what I'm saying? I, that was my mentality. Then I started reading this one book on punishment, and it changed my fucking world. And that book was The Hobbit. <laughs> when I stumbled upon that shit, like, my whole world changed. Like, and when I got off punishment, I showed up at the, at the park with all the crips, like, barefoot. I wanted to be a hobbit. Like, fuck that. What's up, man? <laughs> The Hobbit's a real gangster. I was telling the homies about Bilbo and everything. I'm like, what the fuck happened to you, man? I always thought Hobbit was gangsters. Think about it. Bilbo, he was a G. You feel me? He, he was like 3'11". <laughs> and he left his hood. He walked out of his hood barefoot. Like, fuck this. I'm tired of fucking these Hobbit bitches. <laughs> Smoking this Hobbit weed. You know what I'm saying? Like, I need an adventure. We can all relate to that shit, you know what I'm saying? We some punks. I couldn't even leave without my Jordans. Bilbo left barefoot, like, damn. There's something to be said about that shit. Those are the real gangsters. And the average thug can't even leave his square block, you know what I'm saying? So I'm on my, I'm on my Bilbo quest. I'm up here having scones and shit and, and patrol here, you know what I'm saying? Like, shit. I didn't ate my way out the hood, you feel me? Like, come on, man. I followed the treats. You can't get fucking gluten-free muffins in the hood. What? <laughs> it's just hostess cakes. They try to lock you in with the hostess cakes. The preservatives inflame your thuggery. It inflames your thuggery. <laughs> and the preservatives flame you up. I'm like, fuck that. <laughs> I fuck around and have a zinger and rob somebody. Like, fuck that shit. Uh -uh, I need a crepe with Nutella in it. <laughs> You know what's funny, you guys? You know what's some fun? Here's some funny shit, man. Here's some funny shit. I actually think I stumbled inadvertently upon the cure to homophobia, you guys. I found the cure to homophobia. Craziest shit happened. Let me tell you this story. I recently, three months ago, just got a tooth pulled. Just got a tooth. I had to get my back molar pulled, man. The worst. I would never wish that upon anybody. If you have, take care of your teeth, people. Take care of your motherfucking teeth. And most importantly, don't quit your day job. So you have your benefits. You understand what I'm saying? All right? Because see, I, when my tooth went bad, I didn't have benefits. So I had to go to the dental school. Right? And here's the thing. No diss to the dental school. The dental school is cool if you're going to get like a cleaning. You understand what I'm saying? Or maybe a filling. 
Like you don't go to the dental school for surgery, you know what I'm saying? Like because it's not you don't have like that much you don't you don't have you don't feel that secure when there's a student holding some pliers in the book at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Like, like what the fuck? Did you even read this chapter yet? Like, so I had to go because my tooth was really bothering me and I'm in the business of speaking. I gotta speak in front of people. So I went to the dental school and these two young kids came out to do my procedure. It was this tall white dude and then this young Filipino gay guy, gay Filipino guy, right? And so I asked the white dude who was gonna be pulling my tooth, I said, hey man, have you ever lost a tooth before? He said, oh no man, I've never even had a cavity. And I said, that's a red motherfucking flag. Think about that, because if somebody's gonna pull your tooth, you want them to have at least, you know, feel some of the pain too, like, so they could pull with a little more empathy, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, pull with some compassion, motherfucker, you know, like, you know, don't just stick that shit in, you know what I'm saying? Lube me up some, you know? <laughs> rub, my, rub my knee or something, homie, fluff me up, get me ready for this shit. I already don't have benefits, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you just gonna rub this shit in with a hard yank, you know? So he starts pulling my tooth, the little gay Filipino dude, his job was to suction the extra liquid out of my mouth. So about 30 minutes into the procedure, this guy is yanking so fucking hard, y'all. They numb my gums. Problem is, they didn't numb, they're not pulling my gum. They're pulling my fucking tooth. Right, so halfway through the procedure, the crazy shit happened, y'all. I dropped the fucking tear. Right? But no sad tear, hold on. A real thug tear, though, like some real shit. Some real strong shit. Like, let me give you guys an example. You guys remember that movie Glory with Denzel Washington? You remember when he went out and he stole the socks and he got whipped? And they lined him up in front of all those slaves and they was whipping him and he looked to the left at all those slaves and he dropped that one strong ass tear? That's the tear I dropped. Only thing was, when I looked to the left, there wasn't a gang of slaves I dropped it for. There was just one gay Filipino guy suctioning in my mouth. So me and him get eye contact. At my ultimate height of vulnerability, we get eye contact. He did the craziest shit, y'all. He put his hand out to comfort me. And I'm like, fuck, I'm at my ultimate height of vulnerability. I'm not thinking right. I took his motherfucking hand. And at this moment, that's when I realized that the tooth fairy was real. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I said, that motherfucker's name is Victor Salamanca, baby. <laughs> and that was to cure the homophobia. I, it dawned on me, said, check this out. If you want to cure homophobia, you put a homophobic person in a position of power, and then you send a gay person in there to lend their ass a hand. And like me, they gonna take that shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm not homophobic, I'm just open-minded. My name is Jabari Davis, I love y'all. Enjoy the rest of the show. It's gonna be real.